Hi everyone, uh, Walter Bound here uh, talking about The Great Gatsby, Chapter 3. Now, of course, if you've been reading attentively in Gatsby, you're understanding like his use of color, right? Or you should be if you're you know, doing a close reading. Let's take a look at the color imagery, specifically blue and yellow, in Chapter 3 because he's been playing around with colors. Of course, the green light, all the whites and the red and white uh, Georgia mansion in Chapter 1, Chapter 2, the grays, all lots of colors. But here he gets really serious now about blue and yellow because we meet Gatsby for the first time. All right, so let's take a look at this. In his blue gardens, men and girls came and went like moths among the whisperings and the champagne and the stars. Beautiful sentence. Why say blue gardens? Why not say just gardens or luxurious gardens or magnificent gardens? No, Fitzgerald is using blue for a reason. I'll tell you my reason later, but see if you can try to guess, okay? Fitzgerald has colored with the, with the color before, but now he focuses clearly on blue and yellow, all right? Notice this, they can't went like moths, right? We could talk about these people are phony and they're just gravitating to the light because Gatsby, yellow, needs to attract, like the sun, light, right? And people. Right, so, but these people are moths that just come into the light. That means they're not very bright, right? And they're there amongst the whispering of the champagne. They're there to drink, illegally, of course, but, and the stars. Notice, no commas. Beautiful, beautiful sentence. And of course, the most emphatic word there, stars. Uh, his station wagon scampered like a brisk yellow bug to meet all trains, right? Okay, this is a Rolls Royce. It's kind of funny saying a station wagon. Uh, and it's scampering like a bug scampers. But a yellow bug? Okay, the Rolls Royce is yellow. It will change colors throughout. Sometimes it's cream, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. And, but it's always yellow, but it's some, always some form of yellow, okay? And it changes hues throughout the, uh, the novel. What does all this yellow mean? What does all this blue mean? We'll figure this out. All right, on buffet tables, garnished with glistening hors d'oeuvres. Uh, ah, that should be hors d'oeuvres. Um, spiced baked hams crowded against salads of harlequin designs and pastry pigs and turkeys bewitched to a dark gold. I mean, who can write like this? Uh, not many people can write like this. Okay. Notice the operative word is gold. It's the emphatic word. You always use the most important word, nine times out of ten, I would say, at the end. That's where the emphasis comes. And it's the word gold. Gatsby is King Midas. Right? He can bewitch anything to turn to gold. He touches it, it turns to gold. Okay, so yeah, we have blue gardens. We also have yellow cocktail music, blue and yellow, balancing back and forth together like the eyes of T.J. Eckelberg, right? The yellow spectacles, the blue retinas. So why is his orchestra playing yellow cocktail music? Uh, why use that oh, strange word, uh, that adjective? It could be uh, melodious. It could be any kind of other adjective to describe cocktail music, but it's yellow cocktail music. Yellow, what feeling emotion is portrayed by the word yellow? Think about the connotative power. Words have a, uh, the denotation, which is a dictionary definition. Daddy and father have the same definition, but you use one versus the other, depending on the audience, depending on the story, right? So think about yellow. Um, it's power. It's perhaps, um, uh, you know, overripe or just yellow cocktail music. It's very interesting. And sometimes it's, it's like elusive as to what it means. But it's connected to Gatsby. All right. And then, of course, another thing, another color tied to Gatsby is, of course, a chauffeur in a uniform of Robin's Egg Blue. Good writers give us specific colors, like Tennessee Williams' Delarobia Blue. It's not just blue. It's Delarobia Blue. You figure out what Delarobia means, and then there's all this subtext. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this opens up worlds for me. Great writers like Tennessee Williams, like Fitzgerald, have little Easter eggs, little, little things hidden there, little clues for you to find out, which opens up the richness of the text and meaning and theme. So it's Robin's Egg Blue. Robin's Egg, very, very fragile. Fritz, uh, Gatsby, is he fragile too? You know, it's a very specific color, and again, what does all this mean? But his uh, chauffeur arrives and gives Nick an invitation, the only one who's been invited to this party. All right, Jordan's slender golden arm, all right? Even Jordan has a golden arm. 
Why? Well, she's rich, right? And the girls in the yellow cocktail dresses, they're also, you know, part of this fake, you know, impress, be a son, be golden, you know, the golden people, you know, the tanned people, you know, all these kind of uh, images of we have of artificial. It's all artificial. It's like this gold that's gilded, okay? We have, we sat down at the table with two girls in yellow, okay? These two girls in yellow appear, I think, three times. I didn't realize it was three times in Gatsby until I, until, until I started doing this. I'm like, wow, this is a lot, all right? And these girls are twins. They could, you know, it doesn't really matter who, they're not individuals, they just are the same type of person. And all of these girls at this party seem to be the same type of person, with the exception of Jordan. But we'll talk more about Jordan later. She has some of the best lines in this chapter. In fact, some of the best lines in the book. All right. Uh, a pair of stage twins who turned out to be girls in yellow. All right, here we go again. Um, it was gas blue with lavender beads. All right, this, uh, this uh, dress. Right again, not just blue, not navy, right? But gas blue, right? Gas blue. I mean, again, it's like that robin's egg, but even a lighter shade of blue than robin's egg. Like if you see gas burning, it has the image of blue. But there's various blues within like um, uh, a furnace, right? If you see like the ignition or like bur uh, cooking something on the stove. So this guy's creative, right? Very creative, uh, and. I encourage you to take lessons from Fitzgerald to become a better reader and also perhaps become a better writer. Right. Uh, his tan skin, this is Gatsby, was drawn attractively tight on his face. Of course, like Jordan, he is tan skin, all right? Uh, again, to show that he's also bewitched a yellow to impress, to have that out, to have the appearance of wealth like his yellow Rolls Royce, right? One of the girls in yellow, again, here are these girls in yellow, all right? They're only identified by color, not by too much other kinds of description. Uh, her gray, sun-strained eyes stared straight ahead, okay? Um, I think this is Jordan. I think this is Jordan. Again, sun-strained. Again, the appearance of yellow, but it's straining uh, eyes, right? Okay. So we can think of Jay Gatsby as having an internal color and external color. So all of that textual evidence I've gathered, now I have to make, okay, what do I make out of this? So when you write your essays, whether they're for my class, you're out there in the universe, you gather the evidence and then you say, okay, what can I make of this? Just to say he uses blue and yellow is obvious. For what purpose does he use blue and yellow, right? That is where it's debatable, right? Uh, yellow, the color of power and corruption with Gatsby and others in chapter two is what he wants to manifest to the world. I want to show that I'm Midas. I might not be Midas. I just might be wearing this outfit and showing the world what I want them to see because the reality is very, very, very sad, as we'll find out. All right. However, he is a romantic, like the poet Keats that I worship and Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald worshiped. And like the writer Fitzgerald himself, it's very tender and melancholy. And also, so he has the blue side. We have blue moon, I'm feeling blue. So what I have done here is what you will do. You look for evidence in the text and then substantiate it and then make sense out of it. It's not just, oh, he uses blue and yellow. That's not a thesis. It's obvious. No duh, right? So why does he make it? What's, what's, what's the artistry? What can you propose? Okay. Uh, and here, of course, yellow and blue make green, the green light. And we all are looking for the green light. We all have an obstacle, maybe not all, but most of us have some sort of goal, some sort of fantasy. Me is like writing a you know, best-selling novel. Okay, do I, uh, so do I have obstacles? Yeah, of course I do. 150 AP honor students uh, in my class uh, doing the school newspaper. I mean, that's a huge obstacle. I could be writing my novel right now. Uh, have to cook dinner tonight, obstacle. All right, so we all have obstacles. Maybe you have to think, is that gold, that green light, is that even worth it? Is all that work, all that money, all that investment really worth it? Very good question. Is, day, uh, is what Gatsby's after, is that even worth it? All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in class or on video. Bye.